everyone, it's Margaret Manning here with 60 and Me. This is the place where women who are aging beautifully come to be inspired. And today we're going to be inspired by two amazing guests to talk about the subject of dating after 60. Now, my first guest is Ken Solon. Ken is the author of two books about men and relationships. He's written articles on senior dating for Huffington Post, Maria Shriver, AARP, and he also contributes to the AARP newsletter on uh, disrupting aging. He is a dating coach for women over 50, and also he is a voice actor. He records uh, novels for um, audible.com. Um, he's living in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and joining us from there today. So thank you, Ken for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And Lisa, Lisa Copeland is a best-selling author and speaker. She is a love coach and dating expert working with women over 50. She's been working with women for many years now, and she's really trying to show women how to gain the confidence to get back into the dating game in their 50s and 60s. So welcome, Lisa. It's so nice to be here, Margaret. Thanks for having me. Thank you. You're very welcome. It's lovely to have you both because um, the topics that we're talking about uh, today are related to um, advice and perspective, but from both a male and a female view. So I'm really happy to have that, that energy. But uh, we've talked a little bit about um, advice in general, and you've both been very um, you know, precise about the kinds of positive advice to give women who are dating. But I would like you to take now a little bit deeper view and talk about some of the advice that nobody wants to hear. You know, nobody really wants to hear this advice, but that it's true that in order to get traction in the dating game, you've got to do these things. So, so Ken, let's start with you. What would you say is the, um, some, some advice for men or women that, uh, you know, would be helpful in, in getting relationships started? Uh, well, the first thing I think is to acknowledge that you better have a lot of stamina uh, because senior dating requires an enormous amount of stamina. Um, but I think some of the questions uh, that I think come up pretty often, uh, although nobody really wants to talk about it, is sex. Um, yeah, just because women are over 50 or 60 certainly doesn't mean they're not interested in sex. Uh, what was interesting to me was how many of my clients um, said, uh, they were meeting men. Who, they were meeting men who weren't interested in sex anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think sex is a conversation you can have in a general way. You don't have to be real specific. But I think asking, uh, it, it's a hard question to ask: Is are you still sexual? Are you still interested in intimacy, physical intimacy? Uh, if you are and they're not, don't waste your time mm -hmm. uh, because it's it's apples and it's it's just going to oil and water apples and oranges. It's not going to work. And I think sex for for people who are still sexual after 50, 60, it's usually pretty important. Uh, important enough yeah. that they sure don't want to date somebody who's got a completely opposite point of view. So that's a yeah. hard question to ask, but it's an important question to ask. You touched on a very, very interesting topic, and I want to come back to that in a different, from a different angle in a few minutes. But, but Lisa, what, I appreciate that, Ken. What were you going to say, Lisa, about this uh, advice that maybe women don't want to hear? Well, I also wanted to make a point about what Ken said that's really mm -hmm. tough, too, that nobody taught us about all the dysfunction that happens as we age. I mean, our parents didn't talk about it. <laughs> and, and it's shocking, I think, sometimes to both sexes, what have, you know, what's a little different in the bedroom and that it comes to getting more creative so that it can compensate because you can still have intimacy just sometimes in different ways. Yeah. And it's important to be aware of that. Do you think that, that Lisa, that's a, a little bit behind the fear that women have that men who are, you know, attractive and interesting to them only want to be with younger women because they feel that they're not, you know, they've changed too much or that they're not, you know, sensual enough or where does that start? Do you think? I don't think the fear totally comes from that. I think the fear, um, well, I think now I'm speaking for men, Ken, sorry from what I've seen, the, the biggest fear that uh, women have about wanting a younger woman, a man, men wanting young, younger women, but men have said to me, it's not necessarily that we always want younger women. It's that we want uh, women that appreciate us because I think it's where aging mm -hmm. actually as women, we do get stronger and we start doing so much ourselves and we do forget to appreciate that person that we're in a relationship with. And I have heard from men that younger women will be more appreciative of them. And that's why they go that way. <laughs> Is that true, Ken? 
Uh, I think, In yes, opinion? and I, I think, yeah, I think it is. And I think there's even, uh, I'd even take it a step further and say that, because uh, I've known, uh, I met a lot of men through all the men's work I did over the years. Um, a lot of men date, older men date younger women uh, because they think that's the, uh, you know, the fountain of youth for them, sexual fountain mm-hmm. of youth. You know, so if a, a woman's, you know, a beautiful and young and tight body, oh, I can definitely, you know, get it, get it on with this woman. But even if they can, it doesn't last because that, um, that there really isn't any magic to that. And at some point, that woman's going to say, what am I doing with this old guy? I mean, he's not that good in bed at all. What, what am I doing? And I think, yeah. I think a lot of guys are just compensating, uh, hoping that it'll keep them sexually young. And it doesn't. Um, emotional intimacy keeps you sexually young, uh, not necessarily a, a tight young body. Uh, and also, I think if you don't have money, how long do you think that's going to last? Yeah. And generally speaking, not very not very it's sad i feel so when i see an old guy with a young woman in a restaurant or something i think oh you poor slob don't you get it <laughs> don't you get it i don't care if she's with you if, if all you care is to have some arm candy okay but do you really think that this is going to make you happy in the long run of course not well maybe they don't care about the long run ken maybe they just care about the short run maybe they that's just care an endless endlessly stream of young women and if you've got money and power it's that's good for them too in a way they've got security they've got gifts they've got um you know that maturity it's kind of a cool thing to have the that george clooney keeps popping up in our mind that that beautiful you know, <laughs> even, if he's, even if he doesn't look like george clooney if he's got that you know position and power but um maybe like like you said in another interview, another chat, is that if they are like that, then that's fine. Let them go. What's the point? Yes. Yes. Um, I, I don't know how you can get uh, uh, terribly disappointed in somebody you just met 20 minutes ago. Um, you know, it, it don't, so, which is all about don't have expectations. Um, absolutely don't have any expectations. And uh, if you look at somebody and they're very attractive to you, that doesn't mean you don't ask the hard questions. Um, looks has nothing to do with the hard questions. So um, I think, I, I think, I, I guess Lisa and I very uh, differ a little bit. I think the first date is an interview. And I think it's, if it's fun, great. But more important is it's the first and last not to waste time. And it's the first of many if it's good. Yes, but that's yeah. a really good point. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, no, I differ from that because the um, interview process actually, I think, pushes people away. And I think sometimes it's great. Like I always tell my clients, look, not every guy is going to be a romance partner, but they can make a great friend for you and you stay around yeah. male energy. And when you're interviewing someone, um, intensely interviewing someone was, uh, I feel like it can push someone away that could be a great friend for you in the future. And, but I also understand where you're coming from because if you want the long-term relationship to be a certain way, then yeah, you know, if you need yeah. specific things, I guess you better put them on the table up yeah. front. Well, exactly. I can see, yeah. I can see both sides. Both sides. Because yeah. I think Lisa, I can see if you're looking for fun in a relationship and potentially friends. But what Ken's saying is, if you're serious about a relationship, you know, where you actually are going to become intimate uh, partners, then it's important to ask the questions. Go ahead, Ken. And you were going to say more about that. No, no. I, I, I just think uh, I, when I told my clients, my women over 50 clients, um, that it's an interview. They said, well, but won't that turn men off? I said, only if you ask the questions wrong. I mean, if you're joy, you don't say to somebody, if you've been in therapy, have you done it? You say, you talk about yourself. That's how you bring it out. You right. know, I did a lot of work with this women's group. I did some work with the therapist. It really worked for me. I read this book. How about you? That's right. how you bring right. up right. topics. You don't, you don't just boom, 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 start asking questions. You <laughs> talk about yourself. With a big checklist of questions. Right. So, so, but if you okay. always talk about yourself first, you can't yeah. go wrong. Yeah. But so I think you can you know, create a serious relationship with, without having to do such an intense interview. But the caveat to that is, is if you're looking for like that growth thing, you do need to know that up front. Yeah. But yes. if you're looking for support, someone to love you, someone you can love, someone that uh, you both have separate lives plus a life together, then, you know, it's a more generalized thing. 
Uh, so I think you could come into it from your personalities and who you are. But yeah, definitely, if you're looking for a real specific thing, you better find out up front. Okay. Well, so and, that's. And, uh, well, go ahead. No, all I was going to say that's that's really good. Uh, that's really good advice that nobody really wants to hear because because oh. basically it's it's actually asking oh. to give something of yourself. Ken is saying you've got to say it out there, you know, and then get the reply back. But I wanted to ask another related um, thing <coughs> you don't want to hear, and that's got to do with for women just giving up a bit on the on the feminist stuff you know on the kind of i can i'm i am woman i roar i can do everything myself i don't need a man because that puts guys off i mean i get i, I think you would agree with that ken absolutely so Lisa, absolutely how do we, i'm going to come back because i'm going to go you roar your dog God. I I shut, and I'm going to shut my doors here a second. Um, so I'm, glad she, I'm glad she admitted it was her dog because I don't have a dog. Yeah, I was so. going to say there's a dog in the background. And who cares? But no, but he's got a, a dog has got a point of view. He's trying to say something. <laughs> But no, right. I just, I just made some of my best things about men. <laughs> no, but, you, but you've said before, Lisa, that things like you want to empower women to be confident. You know, you want to give them strength. And you even said you have to be courageous, Ken, earlier. But Lisa, how do you, um, you know, soften those edges and not be such an A-type? <laughs> you know, calm down a bit. Well, that's a really good thing. Um, we're so, we've become so strong as women because we've had to learn to do things ourselves. We've had to learn to protect ourselves. And it is sometimes hard because then we think we're giving up our power and we think that um, then somebody's going to dominate us and, and tell us what to do. But I have found, and I used to be the best emasculator of men ever. You know, I, I did it like it was my job because I didn't know then. <laughs> and, but the thing is, it's you don't even get your needs met if you're always telling men what to do, how to do it, where to do it, and not letting them do it, I guess, from the male perspective. Right. And that's really hard, you know, because we as women think we know how to do it. Well, we have a little book. It's imaginary of how to do things. And so we want it done our way. And then we're not, then we, then we, um, uh, criticize if it's not done that way, and and then we stop getting our needs met. And guys so, don't like you know, this, do they? Can that, this that was of- no. In fact, you just said at the end. I was because I was going to bring this up. My God, if nothing else, don't be critical, don't be judgmental, because mm-hmm. after a while, it's like it's it's like the Chinese water torture. I mean, after <laughs> I don't know how I, for me it, it was almost immediate. As soon as somebody started uh, criticizing me right away because I didn't do something the way they did it, uh, I wasn't doing it wrong. I just wasn't doing it the way they did it. Um, or if somebody right. judged me, I, I said, well, you know, I ride motorcycles. Oh, you're too old for that. No, I'm not too old. If I was too old, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I didn't, I wasn't asking your opinion. I was just telling you what I do. I don't, I don't really want to hear your criticism of it or your judgment, especially if it's negative. I didn't ask you to ride with me. I just said, Hey, it's something I like to do. Uh, you should support each other's dreams and others, uh, other the other person's fun, whatever it is. You know, if it's if it's scuba diving or motorcycling or jumping out of a plane, you know, in a, with a parachute, you have to support it, even if it's not something you're interested in. Uh, you don't want somebody who's just like you. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine anything more boring than to be with a woman who is just like me. Good God, thank you, no. <laughs> but this is the point, Lisa, isn't it? That women are all throughout the, our careers. We've had to you know, compete with men, be as good as men, um, you know, and we start Better. to sound like a pseudo man. We, we start to turn into a pseudo kind of man. But I think, don't you think that that's one of the biggest challenges? And even going back to what you said earlier about getting outside the box with the type of men that you choose, don't choose, don't try to choose the guy that you can always over come or you can beat mm. in a you know a competition mm-hmm. do you think right. really- one of the things i have found with my clients who are definitely type a women who uh, are very powerful in their uh careers is that they actually want an alpha male they do want yeah. someone to take some of that decision making yeah 
uh, away from that, not away from them. They want it shared and they want him to just sometimes make a decision. I'm so tired of making all the decisions. But the problem we as women have is it's very, we think we're giving up our power doing this. So we have to have a comment into everything. And that's part of our staying safe and protecting ourselves, which we've had to do so long versus receiving from a man and allowing him at times to make us feel safe and protected. Yes, we could do it, but it feels good to receive from men if we allow it and to let them make us feel safe at different times and protected. It just, it just feels good. And women like it, but it's very hard. They feel they're giving up their power. Yeah. Right. So, so Ken, you know, we, we actually are a community of women, right? 60 and me is women over 60, but I am pretty sure that there's a lot of guys that are watching this video. So I would love you to also just give a little bit of advice to men. What are some, what is some advice that they may not want to hear, you know, about the way they look or the way they deal with strong women or younger women? What, what, what kind of advice would you give that they may not want to hear? <laughs> uh, don't come on too strong. Um, be, don't be too quick to want to fall in love. Uh, the point of dating isn't necessarily to fall in love. It's to meet somebody, then maybe fall in love. But a lot of men date with um, uh, the notion that, is this the woman I can fall in love with? Well, why don't you see if you like her first? Why don't you see if she's fun to be with? Is she smart enough? Are you smart enough? Is she smarter than you? I mean, I always like women who are smarter than me because I thought, wow, I could probably learn something from these people. Yes. And mostly I did. But don't come on too strong. Uh, don't go into dating with the notion that um, you have to sweep a woman off her feet. I don't think women really want to get swept off their feet. Uh, and that's one of the reasons men, especially men over 60, uh, first date, they say, oh, well, let's have dinner. And they take it to some romantic restaurant and uh, nothing uh, gets discussed except the food and the ambiance in the restaurant. And yeah. then the check comes and there's that uh, uncomfortable moment, who's going to pay? And, <laughs> and of course, some guys say, oh, no, I got it, I got it. Well, that isn't necessarily the smart thing to do either. Um, you know, treat women with respect, treat women, treat women as equals. Um, uh, that's really what it is. Just treat them the way you treat your best men friend uh, with the same sort of regard. Yeah. I think a lot of women will be nodding their heads with that statement though, because I think it is just respect. I mean, Lisa, you were going to say something. I disagree. I think women do like being swept off their feet. Uh, they, they really, really do. Most women want a man to come in and, um, Take, uh, the, well, here's what, let me say it in this way from my own experience. When I was divorced after a 24 year marriage, I wanted Prince Charming to come in, take care of everything, uh, not take care of everything, but take care of everything financially, pay for everything, be a great guy. We would never argue. It was like all Cinderella fantasy. And I think that we as women, I hear it again and again, by the way, with, with women I work with, and we as women do want to be swept off our feet. We want to have that initial attraction factor, that initial, oh, we, we looked across the room and our eyes met and that kind of thing. And I think a lot of women want a man, those at least first three dates to step up and pay for, you know, pay, they invited me, I'll pay for it. And then they'll start compensating, you know, or helping making dinner, buying the movie tickets. But I do think women, we, we watched a lot of fairy tales and we really do want that Prince Charming to come but in I, and take care of us. But I think you're saying the same thing, Lisa. I think you're actually, I mean, Ken is saying that men should not do that. And you're, because and he, there, he's being the realist because you are saying, I want to be swept off my feet and that's my fantasy. It's not it real. It is a fantasy. <laughs> It is a fantasy. It's, a, it's not real, so you shouldn't expect it if it's a fantasy. The guy is right to not put it, to do that. Don't you think? It's what we grew up with, and you're fighting against what we grew up. You know what we grew up with, yeah. and uh, we want a guy to take care of us, but we also want to have. Um, be able to say when things are wrong. That's what it is. We want to be well, able to have it yeah, our I way. Think, I think the notion of taking care of a woman, is, it's a relative thing. Uh, is that emotional? Is it financial? Um, I'm not sure. It can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I don't think, I always suggested that a first date, if two people meet and they want to go out together, they should just split the check in the first date. 
just because then nobody feels uh, obligated, nobody feels pressured, um, and both of and, and if you like the person, you know you're going to see him again, and you can talk about uh, who's going to pay for future dates. But if no, if you're not going to see somebody again, and you had to buy him dinner or lunch or whatever, I don't know that that wouldn't leave me with a very good feeling. Um, I think it happens all the time, you know. Well, like I don't the, know. It didn't happen to me um, because I was pretty clear. I'd say, look, this is a first date. We don't know each other. How about if we pick some place that's not very expensive so it's not a strain for either of us and you pay for, you know, we'll just split split the check. How's that? Every No woman ever said no. None. And, and nobody ever bought. Pissed. I have to tell you, they may not say no, no. but they get pissed and they go... I don't understand. He asked me out. Why didn't he pay? And well, but it isn't about asking. You don't really ask somebody out. Two people talk online. They, they maybe talk on the phone, and they agree to agree, have a date. Yeah. That's yeah, not they... exactly the same as, as uh, <laughs> asking somebody out. I, I think there's a difference. And uh, I don't know. I just see it differently. And I, I did that yeah. for all the years I dated, and no one ever, no woman ever said anything except, sure, why not? Um, and <laughs> some women wanted to buy me dinner and i said no no that's okay i think let's let's just split it let, let's just okay split you it. too this is great because i think this is exactly what happens though in conversations is that there's just a different point of view on this and i think that um i mean lisa to be fair i always would say split it that would be my personal thing because i Maybe I'm just a little bit more cynical about the fairy tale, and I know what's real, <laughs> or that I, you know, that I, and maybe I'm more empathetic. I mean, I appreciate that guys don't always have a lot of money, and we're in this together. But I'm going to stop us here because we've got lots of other things to talk about, and I want to change direction. But um, I encourage you to leave your comments below. Come on, let's let's get involved in a conversation here. Ken and Lisa will be coming back to the video. It'll be an article on our 60ME website. And leave questions for them. Tell us what you think about this. Would you, how would you split the money on its first date or expect the man to pay? That's a good one to a yes or no question. <laughs> so thank you, Lisa. And thank you, Ken, very, very much for